All righty. Welcome, everybody, to the Beverly Version 5 launch event. It's been quite a while, a year, in fact, since we first announced Beverly Version 5. So what is Beverly? Uh, a community to see everyone enabled to do what they love, share it with the world, and live well. We do this by a culture of growing beyond ourselves. Today, we'll cover the launch of Beverly version 5 and how that has been different from the prior versions. Share some announcements. We've got a few uh, and of what's happened the past year and also introduce a whole bunch of things to come. I'm joined today by Arjun uh, from the Beverly India and Beverly Traction uh, groups and also Sumit also from the Beverly India and Beverly Traction group. Uh, we'll go more into what the groups are. That's new with Beverly version 5. So let me share the agenda. Uh, we have a bunch of presentations uh, that we'll be going through. All right, so we'll be going first out. Shout out to our sponsors. We actually have a few. Uh, so shout out to Elliot Ditman. Shout out to Armin um, Mictrian. Uh, shout out to Bolsa. And shout out to Rob Morris. I'll include the links and the descriptions in the video after in the video description afterwards so overview of the events and also there'll be affiliate links for some of the best things so that's how you support Beverly. you can participate in calls join our groups or uh click some of the affiliate links in the links below really helps that's uh that's our income because we don't monetize <laughs> our videos all right so over the overview of the agenda what is Beverly version 5 so how is it different from prior incarnations of Beverly? well Beverly version one came out originally in 2010. It was a company for my open source projects. I was getting a lot more open source work back in the day. And we, uh, I needed something to house all of that. So Beverly became my company for my consulting and all for my open source. In 2013, I went full time on open source. It got sponsored. Uh, the company shut down and then it just became a community. Um, and that lasted for quite a while uh, until in, in around 2016, we set up the, uh, just on a, as a personal thing, we set up the Jordan B. Peterson community. If we go to jordanbpeterson.community, hopefully the site's still alive, or I think maybe it's just going to redirect. Um, but yeah, we watched Peterson's videos and we really liked it. Um, we set up a private discussion group every week uh, to discuss over his content. And we did that for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Eventually, we started publishing the videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, and all the original videos you'll find on our channel are more Peterson-related, and you'll even see that it was Jordan B. Peterson fans discuss. Um, so Jordan B. Peterson fans discuss how to read a book and whatnot. And we started off doing his series and also his book. So we read all his recommended reading list uh, and we covered all his lectures multiple times. And part of doing that, we ended up developing a whole bunch of really intricate study notes, um, which if you go to the study notes category, uh, this is covers all the Viveki content, uh, book content as well. But if we keep going back, we'll find, yeah, the Beverly, sorry, the John B. Peterson stuff with really detailed notes. And you can click one of these timestamps and find out exactly what he says. So that's how uh, the JBP community started. Then in 2018 or 2019, we wanted a branch beyond Peterson. There were several areas of uh, criticism that we started to observe uh, and also, we grew beyond. We read all the material. We went through all his lectures twice with different members as new members came in. Uh, we were discussing them privately and publicly. Uh, so we grew far beyond uh, Peterson at that stage. And then uh, Beverly kind of iterated then into version three, which was like this collective uh, part. And that went fine. However, there was a lot of uh, issues then with uh, trying to get people to organize themselves together and proposing what to do and what should be done and trying to figure out things and coordinate projects. Uh, then with Beverly version 4, we became more of a, uh, a cohort um, where it was like the benevolent dictator model. I was back in charge 
but we um, benefited from like the decentralized nature um, a bit from what people are interested in. But even for that, uh, it was still an issue of how do we get people interested um, and participating in things and how can I also not be involved in every single thing? So then we launched Beverly version 5, which is the new one uh, here today. And we can see the flaws of the Beverly version 4 in terms of the year break that we, we did. Uh, we did a lot of great recordings. We reached the point where we felt that uh, we now were doing recordings that could even stand on themselves, like the last few ones, but especially like Internet as a Cult, which is part of a three-part series. Um, the other two have been recorded. One has been edited, but they still need to go up. Uh, that will be done soon enough. Uh, so with Beverly version 5, the model's actually really changed. Um, I'm just going to open up a new tab here, and I can share the structure. Application window. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so with Beverly version 5, we've got Beverly, big thing here. Then there's ambassadors, and then we have groups or chapters. A group is can be a social group, but groups also include chapters. So chapters is like a formalized group. Then there's a champion part of that chapter. And then once a month, everyone meets up in the Beverly meetup. And the only requirement here is that you're willing to grow beyond yourself. And we'll see this as I share back into the other screen. Um, Beverly where hold up. Where'd it go? Was I sharing my I was only sharing Firefox before, right? Yeah. So right before uh, this you were sharing only the Firefox. But okay. before that you were sharing yeah. the entire screen. Yeah. Yeah. Before that I was sharing. Oh man. I wasn't meant to be sharing the entire screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh man okay <laughs> maybe i can crop it um all right so yeah beverly version 5 launch event all right so we got our sponsors there's our channel um that was an example all right so that's about beverly da, da, done all right so uh now with the forum we've got announcements meetings discussion study notes ambassadors Beverly Group, Software, Beverly Nomads, Beverly Traction, Beverly India, Beverly Beginners, and Beverly Scholars. Uh, so if it's green, it is a group. Um, and the blue ones, anyone can post to. So we've always had this discussions, anyone can post here. But now people, and also study notes, people can share the study notes. And But what's new is this Beverly Groups. So... Now people can formulate themselves into groups. So in this uh, call today, we've got the Beverly Traction Group represented, I guess myself from Beverly Software, uh, also from Last Lang, and we've got the India chapter represented. Um, other groups that have started, but they also uh, need more people is the Beverly Nomads, Beverly Women, and Beverly Scholars. So the Beverly Women one, it's about four women in there right now, but we need more. Um, so how's the structure of some of these going to work? So with the Beverly uh, Traction Group, we've got, we can see here, expectations, regular meetings with another Traction member to be your Traction buddy. So Mitt's going to present about this later in the call uh, and sharing of generic takeaways, issues, and improvements in the monthly meetup. And then some suggested reading here and then who to reach out if you want to join this. So it's kind of similar to thinking Ray Rich's mastermind group. Uh, Beverly Software, this is related to Beverly Software Initiatives. Um, we've got a Dorothy Signal Group for the Beverly Dorothy Project. And uh, Beverly Nomads, this is all about our digital nomad or just in general nomad content. We've got a lot of content here, like how to, I lived, for instance, two years in Malaysia. So here's all of this detail on how to live in Malaysia um, and how to sort out your digital nomad tax residency, citizenship, contracts, and legal. Why not? So other people can join that and then share their own resources and whatnot. Um, some that we have proposed is the Beverly Christianity Group and also the Beverly Leadership Group. Uh, so Beverly Leadership would be great for mentorship, coaching, and accountability to improve our leadership skills and performance in our daily lives. So work, family, personal relationships. Uh, 
pretty much recommended reading is this one, how to lead in product management. Two that are suggested, they were helpful to me, would be those. Um, so that's one to kind of maybe help the champions who are organizing groups because it's really like herding cats trying to schedule meetings across very different time zones and interests. Um, so kind of a little group to kind of help people build up their product management and also team management tools. Um, so if you're interested in that, reach out. Beverly Christianity. Uh, as part of the scholars group, actually, uh, it's about uh, how to read a book, uh, which is a book. We covered that already in the Beverly channel, but they also have a reading list. Um, and this reading list has about 100 or so works that are foundational to understanding civilization or Western civilization and then being on the frontier and then going beyond it. So uh, I've read maybe 10 of these works so far, and the goal eventually for the scholars group will be to read all of them and have other people who really want to read uh, the classics or the foundational works of civilization. Um, so if you're interested in that, then, you know, you look at what the join is and then follow the join criteria to be part of that. One of the books on the how to read a book one is the Old Testament and then at number uh, 30, the New Testament. So we can see that there was 28 uh, books between the Old Testament and the New Testament, which kind of were then the frontier of progressing civilization. So a lot of psycho technologies were invented between those between the old testament and the new testament so that would be uh good to read as part of the scholars but also maybe to read as part of a christianity group try and get some christians on board and and kind of share uh for people who are also practicing the christian faith as we tackle them so personally i want to maybe start tackling the old testament in about may um may or april no, actually may or june <laughs> or july uh, so if anyone else wants to go through the Old Testament, maybe a book a month, uh, then reach out and we can start discussing it in the Beverly meetups. Um, all right. What are the groups to talk about? Leaderships, Christianity, India, members, champions. All right. So some special groups. Members, anyone who's part of a group. Champions are the organizers of groups. Ambassadors are the kind of organizers of the champions. Um, the ambassadors are the ones who hold these meetups. And we got stakeholders who are the sponsors uh, and alumni, anyone who's graduated a Beverly class or have been grandfathered in. Um, so people like Nick and Tyler would probably go in the uh, alumni uh, group, which we've, and also John, and submits in there. Uh, so people who've been part of Beverly for a very long time. Um, and India uh, will be talked about by Ajun a little bit later. And, but the, India and the women's group are kind of important because they're also about subcultures. So the Beverly overarching culture is about just willing to grow beyond yourself uh, for the mission to have everyone see what they love, do share, no, do what they love, share it with the world and uh, live well. Um, but to be part of doing that, we've got this big, um, the Beverly manifesto, uh, which you'll find at just beverly.me. And that kind of goes into the complexity of that. And then this new part of this, uh, prior, we always had the isolated wisdom to competitive wisdom to collaborative wisdom. But we've added, um, and these pillars, philosophy, products, and praxis, but with Beverly version 5, we're adding participation. Because forming, having a, a universal culture of willing to grow beyond yourself, that's great. Now we can get the Marxists talking with the libertarians. Right, and they can strengthen the arguments in isolation alone and then come to a monthly meetup where they can really hash it out and go at it with the best arguments. So they can still man themselves, you know, and still man their, their opposition kind of thing and then test their arguments in the monthly meetups. Um, but that kind of culture is important because if you try and get everybody in a single culture um, who kind of diverge, then there's a lot of bickering and back and forth and scheduling doesn't really happen, just drowns in noise. So by getting people in groups where it's always high signal, and then they can bring that high signal of isolated great arguments into a monthly meetup, then they can challenge that against other groups. 
So it's really about kind of delegating as much as possible, letting the beverage community kind of take ownership in an organic way and grow themselves um, to where we should eventually have hundreds of groups, um, if not more, uh, of, you know, dozens and dozens of people um, in the groups. And then they can all kind of come together. And then as time goes by, we'll have more ambassadors to hold more meetups. So that's kind of the, the big vision there. Um, and then, yeah, those are the little bits to kind of get involved now with Beverly, which have changed. So if we go back to the agenda. Uh, all right. How groups, community, what does this mean going forward? What can I learn more? Yep, kind of covered that. All right, what's launched? So the internet is a mistake. We launched that on our YouTube channel before. Uh, the first part of that series is Internet as a Cult. Uh, we can see that the second and third episodes have already been recorded. They were recorded last year. Um, and they will be going up by the next Beverly Meetup. So the Beverly Meetups right now are scheduled to happen every four weeks. So it will be great to have them done because we go into, is the internet a mistake? And then we say, well, yeah, it's pretty cultic. And then second episode is all about it being the internet being used as a weapon. How are even nation states using the internet as a weapon? Um, and then the third one is, well, how can we defend ourselves against the cultic and weaponized aspects of the internet? Uh, and that one will be called um, the internet as a church. And that's kind of where the beginnings of Beverly version five kind of started back in the April um, of last year, I think when that was recorded. So, uh, da, da, da. all right, let me find the agenda again. <laughs> uh, um, all right, let me just co op this tab then. Meetings. All right, the other big uh, launch is we've launched a new forum for a new country. You may have seen that leak already in my browser tabs. Uh, Liberland is a new libertarian country. Uh, they're between Croatia and Serbia. And they have, do they have the links of how many people they've got joined? It's, it's a lot of people um, who've signed up already. So they're offering e-residency and citizenship. The first uh, housing is kind of already being built. They have more than 100 delegates around the world. And it's very uh, exciting. So what did Beverly do? Why are we talking about this? Well, this discourse forum here was launched um, as a pitch to the president last year. And it's finally launched now. And uh, very exciting. So, yeah good place to kind of discuss the foundations of a new libertarian country. Now, all right, so the agenda, dot, dot, dot. let me pin this tab. All right, what's also in the launch, there's a new, another Beverly project called Dorothy. Uh, this one will be launching by next month. Uh, this is a dot files ecosystem focused for developers but really allows you to automate your developer workflows quite easily. Uh, yeah, internet mistakes, upcoming groups. So Christianity group, scholar group, uh, India group, women group, and uh, leadership group. If you're interested in any of them or you want to propose your own, reach out uh, and we'll make them uh, happen. Testimonials, that will be something that will come. <laughs> um, and also some presentations by myself. I hope to have them done this month, but more things took uh, preference as we move things over. So channel updates. Uh, Beverly India, Beverly Traction, and Beverly Women. Uh, uh, Arjun, do you want to present your Beverly India presentation? Uh, sure, Ben. Yeah. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yep. It's coming through perfect. Oh, okay. Uh, so let me just go. So what do you see right now? Do you still see the full screen? I, yeah, I see tiny habits and it's, yeah, it's perfect. I just see tiny habits. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just um, put it into, um, yeah. So you can see the full screen, right? The whole yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. The whole Thanks. slide. Yeah. 
thanks for confirming um so hi everyone so today i just wanted to um sort of um give you a summary of this book that i recently finished reading and something that i'm thinking about and it's called uh, tiny habits um and it's written by this guy called uh, bj fog and he's a behavioral scientist at the stanford university and he teaches something called behavior design over there um and at stanford he used to teach this class hold, called hold up ajan just uh, make your microphone a little bit further away from your mouth cuz okay. you're getting the uh the breath on the on the microphone it's causing like this sort of distortion okay so is this good ah uh, yeah now it's a little quiet maybe or just like put it maybe near your chin rather than your lips okay how about now yeah so a little bit quiet okay how about right now is it better yeah i i think it'll i think it'll have to do <laughs> okay all right that's that's good yeah this is better right yeah that's perfect yeah okay um so yeah so bj fog he used to teach this class at stanford called the facebook class right in which he taught students how to make apps addictive and what he does with this book is that he uses the same principles of behavior design and applies it to uh, sort of changing our own behavior and how we can create new habits um, and all that so i'm going to try and keep this as simple as and uh, straightforward as possible and because this book gets a little technical in some places um, and uh, yeah if at any point anyone has any questions you know feel free to stop me and ask um okay so let's get into this okay so i think we are all familiar with the cycle right like this has happened to all of us where we get an intense motivation to do something like for example maybe um i decide to start running from tomorrow and with full motivation but what usually ends up happening is i might be like keep it up for a day or two uh, or maybe a week uh, and slowly my motivation starts sagging and i fall back into my old patterns of behavior um like some people might be able to hold this motivation for a few weeks uh, maybe but the point is eventually it um, falls back so we are usually caught up in this what he calls a burst and bust cycle so this is our standard approach to behavior design uh, we get intense motivation and do something for a few days and then stop doing it for weeks at a time so one of the things that he says is this is like it's not our fault when we don't stick to our habits so the fault actually lies with badly designed behaviors and he comes back to this idea constantly in the book uh, that you know we have been taught the wrong way to approach behavior change uh, we have been taught to sort of blame ourselves and feel guilty if we cannot stick to our habits uh, that we decide to cultivate but he says it's not really us that is the problem uh, but it's the approach that is wrong and we need to stop judging ourselves and look at our systems of change instead uh, the systems of behavior change that we use um and one of the example that he gives is um so we try to do massive things like you know working working out an hour a day at the gym from tomorrow or something uh, like after years of slacking off which you know if you think about it is not a helpful strategy and in doing that we end up doing more harm to ourselves than good um and maybe the right approach to right approach is to start small so this is one of the quotes from the book he says um the essence of tiny habits is this take a behavior that you want make it tiny find where it fits naturally in your life and nurture growth um and that is sort of what i hope to do in this presentation is to elaborate upon this idea of his so let's about let's talk about why tiny right like why are we approaching behavior change in this manner um so first of all tiny is fast right like one of the main complaints that we uh hear when we try and create new habits is like it it takes a lot of time or i don't have that much time to do this Uh, activity so tiny habits be- mitigates that problem uh, you don't necessarily need to need a lot of time um, uh, to do these habits um, tiny can start now 
so you don't uh, like you don't procrastinate a tiny habit precisely because it's very easy to do um tiny is safe um so like an example is one of the things you can do if you want to start a yoga habit is maybe you can go and buy a yoga mat or another thing you could do is maybe you could buy a ticket to india and enroll for a yoga class which is risky right and in terms of time and money or anything but tiny habits are safe in that sense uh, next is tiny can grow big um, like it doesn't need to remain tiny forever you can nurture its growth and eventually it will transform into something mighty um, and tiny doesn't rely on willpower uh, which we talked about right like how we usually approach behavior change is you know by being intensely motivated for a few days um, and which is the exact opposite of what we'll do and finally tran tiny is transformative okay so now let me just give a few examples which will help us understand what exactly uh, the author means by tiny right like floss one tooth instead of flossing all your teeth do two wall push up instead of doing 20 push ups uh, read reading two lines of a book instead of you know uh, reading 10 pages at a time so this is the scale at which we are talking about it's a counterintuitive approach to behavior change uh, but the point is to make something so easy that we cannot have an excuse for not doing it okay so let's see what the fog behavioral model is it represents like it represents three universal elements of behavior and their relationship to one another so b is equal to mp over here b stands for behavior m stands for motivation a for ability and p stands for prompt so what the model says is for any behavior to happen there needs to be a motivation for the person to do something there needs to be the ability of the person to do it and there also needs to be a prompt which reminds him to do that behavior and all three have to converge together for a behavior to happen in if any of these three is missing or goes wrong or something then the uh, behavior does not happen and it works for both good and bad habits like uh, let's take an example of checking social media uh, if a notification comes on to your phone that is a prompt and my motivation is uh, you know me wanting to see who liked my photo on instagram or something and i have the ability to click on the notification like it's a very easy action to take um, so that is an example of how this model works in the real world um, so let's just try and plot this on a map right like let's say the x-axis is motivation where below there is low motivation to take an action and above um, there's high motivation to do that action and on the y-axis we have ability where on the left an action is a is very hard to do and on the right the action is very easy to do um, then there is this orange line over here which is called the action line in the graph um, so what he says is that for any action to take place it can only happen if it is above the action line over here um, so maybe let's look at a few examples okay so let's look at the difference between flossing all your teeth versus flossing just one of your tooth so on the left you see that the motivation to do that activity is very low like flossing all your teeth um, is something that we might not be very motivated to do sometimes um, also note that hard does not necessarily mean very hard right it just means any amount of hard that would stop you from doing that behavior um, is hard so for flossing so that's for flossing your teeth but on the right you can see for flossing just one tooth the action is actually pretty easy to do um, you know it's just one tooth and you know um, we have like enough motivation to do that action so it converges and uh, both motivation and ability converges and it takes the um, action about the action line so that is what the tiny habits is all about like making uh, actions very easy to do so this is just another example for push-ups so on the left we have 20 push-ups which might be hard for some of us and we might have very low motivation to do it but on the right two 
doing two wall push-ups is very easy and we might even be motivated to do it and that pushes the behavior right above the action line also um, yeah so that's it um, so over here let's look at the first aspect of the fog behavioral model the m uh, right which stands for stands for motivation uh, so motivation he says is the least predictable and reliable of the three components so if we look once like once again at the image that we used in the beginning uh, on the right um, motivation stops being reliable after a few days um, you can rely on it to do an action once and that's about it motivation is very scattered and unsustainable and at some point your motivation would sag as it fluctuates from day to day or month to month or something um, so let's take like pause for a second and look at an exercise that he talks about in the book right it's called um, a swarm of behavior exercise and this exercise is meant to figure out what behavior what behaviors are we naturally motivated to do for any outcome that we want to achieve so let's take the outcome of reducing my stress right now we might want to achieve like some different outcome right like reduce screen time be more productive or you know like make a pile of cash or whatever but here we'll take this as an example uh, just to give you an idea on how the book asks us to approach behavior change so reduce my stress is something that i want to achieve what the exercise asks us to do is list down all the behaviors that i can do that will help me reduce my stress so it could be play piano after i come back from work or do some yoga in the morning or play with my dog in the evening or uh, meditate or anything and one of the important things about this is that we need to understand is there is a difference between aspiration and behavior in the center um, is the aspiration uh, reducing my stress it's a like it's an abstract desire but a behavior which we have listed in smaller circles uh, a behavior is an action that you can do right now or at any specific point in time so reduce my stress is kind of vague but the behavior should be more specific like playing with my dog in the evening is a very specific behavior that we can do or an action that we can take um, and at this point of the exercise um, you know is to try the point of the exercise to try and list as many of these behaviors as possible like the more you more options that you list the better and you can take inspiration from your friends or you know be creative or check out what the internet says and uh, one thing to remember is that i'm not committing to any of these actions yet i'm just brainstorming and listing all the ideas that comes to my mind okay so let's move on from here um so we already talked about this when exploring behavior options you're not making any commitments or decisions you're just exploring options and once you've exhausted all the options make them more specific um, meditate could change to meditate every evening at 5 p.m um so yeah you should make it more specific like we discussed um okay so this is a little bit you know going into technical territory but so once we have listed all the various options that we try to do um we what we want to do is we want to match these behaviors to ourselves so we might have listed a behavior which says gardening but if i do not have time after office to do gardening it might it might not be the right uh, behavior for me to adopt right so what we try to do is we try to plot all these behaviors on a quadrant so i'll just maybe get my laser point okay so on the x-axis we have okay so on the x-axis we have um, high impact behaviors um, which are behaviors that are very effective uh, to get to the outcome that we desire and in this case reduce our stress and over below we have low impact behavior which are behaviors that might not be so effective for me in reducing my stress on the y-axis on the left you have behaviors that i can't get myself to do and like we said if we have no time after office to garden it might not be the right fit and on the right we have behaviors that i can get myself to do realistically so 
what we do is that we plot all the options that we came up with before and plot it like this. So here there are behaviors that are high impact, but something that we can't get ourselves to do. Um, then we have low impact behaviors, which you can't get yourself to do. And then there is low impact behaviors, which you are not very effective, like which are not very effective to reduce your stress, but you can do it, you know, but we might not want to do that. And on the top right, we have behaviors which are high impact and we can get ourselves to do it. And these behaviors in this quadrant is what we need to take a closer look at. These are what he calls golden behaviors. Um, and these are what we are going to be working with. Um, OK, so I'll just move on to the next slide. Does like. Um, I, like, am I making any sense? I hope uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's great. I, I'm just thinking as you present all the same applicability to my own life, like even with the uh, an early example with running, for instance, um, uh, like all the times I've done the longest runs I've ever done on the longest walks, I never actually intended to do my longest run or my longest walk. I just started right. off and I just kept going. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that is one of the um, like sort of proofs that um, like what this it's exactly what this book talks about. So, you know, you might like if you plan something to do something, maybe you, you might not be able, like maybe you will not do it. And it is something that we need to judge uh, right. and we need to understand where we are on the motivational scale and then do the action accordingly. Right. Yeah. And at multiple times, like, uh, cause I've set like a high goal, but then I don't have the energy or whatever. And then I've decided not to do the run versus just right. at least doing some run. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad that you, uh, you know, uh, like this is making sense. So that, yeah, good. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe I'll just move on to um, this. So the next letter in the behavior model is A, uh, which stands for ability. Um, so like we've already talked about this, most people try and do uh, big things like going to the gym for an hour a day every day, which might be unrealistic. Um, and like uh, Ben uh, said right now, like we are trying, what we are trying to do is we are trying to make things easy because you know, like we said, motivation is unreliable. And the only way we can get to do a certain behavior, um, or in other words, to take take it above the action line um, is by making it easy. Okay, so, so let's just go back to the exercise, right? Like the swarm of behavior exercise that we did. Um, so what did we do until now, we wanted the outcome of reducing stress. So we brainstormed a few ways that we can reduce our stress. And then what we did is we matched these behaviors to what we can realistically do by plotting them on this quadrant. Now, imagine that if we found that meditating for like, we found that meditating for 30 minutes a day is one of those golden behaviors, right? Like it is something that you saw that was really effective at reducing your stress and it is something that you are realistic willing like realistically willing and able to do um so what are we gonna do we will not try to instantly start meditating for 30 minutes a day from tomorrow because like we discussed starting a behavior off like that something so big usually ends up in a failure um we might do it for a week and then you know maybe stop but because doing it every day is hard. So what do we do? Um, so what we do is we make it easy to do. We make it tiny. So instead of starting off with meditating for 30 minutes a day, I just start with meditating for just three consecutive breaths. That's it. Nothing more and nothing less. So I just start off with that. Um, yeah, so these are just uh, like there are two ways of making a behavior tiny, right? Like the first is called a starter step. Um, and what it is, is it's one small move towards the desired behavior. For example, um, if you want to make a habit of out of walking three miles every day, your starter habit might be just wearing your walking shoes. That's it. Like that is your tiny behavior. And that is the only thing 
you need to do at the beginning of your new habit you don't have to walk you don't have to go out you just have to wear your shoes every day um the second method is scaling back so this means using the behavior you want and shrinking it so that it becomes a much smaller version of your desired behavior um so the, the author in this book wanted to floss his entire teeth every day but he began with just one um so that's an example of scaling back or if you want to read 10 pages every day you just start with reading two lines every day okay so the next letter in the model is uh, p which stands for prompt uh now a prompt is anything that reminds me to do a behavior um and usually uh, mostly our prompts are either unconscious or invisible to us like um my body tells me that i'm hungry uh, and i eat that is an internal prompt or you get notified on social media and you click on it which is an external prompt um now there are different kinds of prompts but what we are going to look at is something called an action prompt an action prompt is one where a behavior that you already do uh, can remind you to do a new habit so let's just look at a few examples so let's take the behavior that we decided to do a couple of slides back right like meditate for three breaths the example of an action prompt that i'm giving here is after i sit down with my coffee in the morning i will meditate for three breaths so imagine um, like every day my routine is that i get up um, and i make coffee and i sit sit down in my chair to drink it so that is something that i already do every day what i do is i use that behavior that i already do to remind me to do this new behavior so sitting down my with my coffee on my chair becomes a prompt um and that reminds me to meditate for three breaths um so other two examples are after i flush i will do two pushups so <laughs> this is a habit that the author had cultivated in the book um and you know he Uh, prefaces it by saying that he used to work from home at that time and he could do two pushups every time he uh, you know went to the washroom and he flushed but for us people who working in an office it might be a little bit awkward to do that um and finally just another example is after i shut my car door i will write down one task that i need to get done today so this is again taken from one of the examples in the book from this woman and she was running her own business and every day after she drops off her kid in the school she would shut the car door and that would be- become a prompt for her and that then she would that would remind her to write down a task that she wanted to do for the day okay <clears throat> so let's just look at the steps in the let's just summarize what we spoke until now um so this is how we do it we clarify stress um then we move on to the second step which is we explore behavioral options right we did that with the swarm of swarm of behavior exercise um and thirdly we matched ourselves with the specific behaviors and we found out that uh, and found out what the golden behaviors are uh, and in our example it was meditate for 30 minutes a day and the next step is we start tiny you know we just decided to do meditation for just three breaths um after that what we do is we find a good prompt like i said and that is where do we place this tiny habit in our day and in which part of our routine do i place it um and i decided that i will meditate every for just three breaths every time i sit down with my coffee in the morning and these are the five steps that we follow for any behavior not just for this okay so let's look at something else over here um so so far we talked about creating tiny habits right like um but there is still an important question that is unanswered which is how do we go from tiny to transformative um how do we go from you know just two wall pushups a day to 20 pushups and then maybe eventually uh, work out 30 minutes a day every day as an example um so let's just try and illustrate it let's just say that okay i'll get the laser point let's just say that 
this is where we are right we, we are at two wall push-ups a day and we need to eventually get to working out 30 minutes a day so how do we do it um let's say that i've done this tiny habit of doing two wall push-ups a day for around two weeks now uh, let's just say um and now it has become wired in for me and this habit has become very automatic for me and i feel like i can easily do this um, and i remember to do it every day it has become a part of my routine now now that is when i try to push a little ahead uh, right so let's just say from two wall push-ups i try to go to maybe um, doing two minutes of warm-up but what i see is that i still find it a little hard right like i still um i feel frustration and pain when i try to do when i try to do this um and what this tells me is that maybe i'm not ready for this yet maybe i need to take it down a little bit and you know just with a little bit of experimentation i figure out that um the next step for me is to do just two normal push-ups so what I'm essentially doing is I'm increasing the difficulty just a tiny amount. So I, I push myself just enough so that I don't feel pain or dis discomfort, but I'm still making some progress. And that is the secret to growing our habits from tiny to transformative. It reminds me uh, when for like for running, uh, you start uh -huh. off uh, like to be able to run which is uh, less than five minutes a kilometer, uh, you okay. have to first start off jogging. But then even a start off jogging, like sometimes you just have to kind of do it at walking pace, but then just in the jogging motion. Because when I got back into running, I was like doing nine minutes a kilometer, like unbelievable, oh. unbelievably slower yeah. than my prior history when I was a teenager. But I did that for like six months and then finally I could do six minutes. And then do it for you know another year or two, and then finally get down to you know actual being able to run. Um, right. Yeah. Where if yeah. I set the goal to just to be able to run, like even right now, I'm still progressing uh, back from jogging to running because I'm getting back into into running again. So it's like I can't set the expectation. Hey, I'm gonna run. I still need to just be happy with that little gradual uh, improvement. Right. Exactly. And that gradual improvement is not something small, like uh, doing that every day will automatize that and, you know, will create that muscle memory. And it's always once we, once that activity is very easy to do, we can push beyond that all the time, right? Like, and it is very easy to go beyond that. Um, and like you mentioned, you know, this is something that we do naturally in some cases, like in your case, you just, you didn't start running um, like the six minutes for, I think that's what you said, like six minutes in a, for a kilometer, uh, which yeah. you didn't start doing that. You eventually reach there slowly. Um, so uh, tiny habits is a much more um, like starting small on steroids. I think that is one way that I can ex like doing extremely, extremely tiny behaviors that you might not think, you know, you would, it would be beneficial for you, yeah. but uh, still it makes some effect and it still makes some, um, yeah it, it it still helps us in some way um yeah so over here the so it says you need to know the edge of your uh, comfort and what it feels like to go a little beyond right like knowing my um, comfort edge helps me do a bigger version of the habit without feeling pain or frustration which will actually weaken my habit uh, is what the book says like if you start feeling frustration and pain you will not push beyond it you'll actually stop doing that habit that is why um, tiny habit says that you know don't raise the bar prematurely we only push ourselves uh, when we have automatized the tiny habit and we push ourselves just enough just enough to make progress um, so thanks, uh, Ben, for that example. I think it brilliantly illustrates this uh, idea. Um, so over here it says uh, making the habit easier to do not only helps it take root, but also grow big. Um, we are not aiming for perfection, only consistency. Keeping a habit alive means keeping it rooted in your routine, no matter how tiny it is. 
right um, and there will be days when you have motivation to do more than two wall push ups right and by all means in those days feel free to do more but the point is on days when motivation is low you have something to fall back on and on on these days you only aim for you know two wall push ups or something like that or you know your tiny version of whatever the habit is so this slide just talks about um, success momentum that when you feel successful at something even though tiny your confidence grows and your motivation increases to do that habit again and perform related behaviors this is called success momentum yeah and that's what we are aiming for for momentum um, and compound effects basically so these are just a few mindset shifts that we are encouraged to make and also what we automatically make when we you know start practicing this tiny habits method um so people change by feeling good not by feeling bad we talked about this like when we feel pain or discomfort when you're doing something it is maybe a sign that we should scale back the behavior a little bit to make it more easier um next is knowing your comfort edge helps you do a bigger version of the habit without feeling pain or frustration which will weaken the habit um and then just uh, push yourself just enough so that you don't feel pain or discomfort but you make progress um and the last thing is it's a long term game right like how many habits that we started a year ago do we still stick to right and maybe if we could do this experiment where you know one version of you approached behavior change like you normally do and another version of you used the tiny habits method which one do you think will still be sticking to the habit like 3 months or 6 months down the line you know it's just a thought experiment that yeah <laughs> Right. For the uh the third point the blue one push yourself just enough so that you don't feel pain or discomfort but you mm-hmm. make progress. So a physical example that is also like with running. Uh like your lungs right. can give up, your energy can give up or your muscles can give up. Uh so right. you're kind of always want to be pushing one, but if you're pushing all then you kind of just end up collapsing or if you push them too much. So you kind of want to be just on that boundary or just over the boundary maybe. um right. where you are pushing that way at least you're growing something but if you're just running at your comfort zone um is maybe it works for some people but i always need to just go beyond um to get that takeaway cuz kind of with jogging you can jog forever uh but if you want to get to running then you have to go just beyond but i wonder right. for the the just enough so you don't feel pain or discomfort is that also for like emotional pain or discomfort cuz like say in our workplace we're not actually feeling physical pain or discomfort but maybe exactly. we've got too many things on our to-dos and we're like yeah we're going to be really productive but then something comes up that day and now we're just getting frustrated and angry at ourselves we're going that first point the orange one um it, right. it also applies for emotional not just physical yes i think you've hit the nail on the head uh, ben with that question because uh yes uh, so the short answer is yes it is also the pain and discomfort uh, we are talking about is not just physical uh, but mental uh, as well with this frustration that comes up all these emotions that come come, come up right so in the book um, when he talks about making things tiny he talks about five different things right like there is like there are there is the reason why somebody will not do like do an a- activity or make an action is because of five reason one could be he doesn't have time they might not have time second is they might not have money third might be it might be too mentally um, stressful for him third fourth is it might be physically fr- uh, stressful for him or the fifth is um yeah it might uh, the fifth is routine so it says that if uh, there is if what, your new activity or your new habit that you're creating uh, messes up with your existing routine then people might not do it so these are the five different things and yeah physical it's both about physical and uh, mental discomfort yeah okay so i'll just move on to the next slide yep okay thanks uh so yeah so i tried to explain the sort of basic idea of the book but there is so much in the books that i couldn't possibly cover for example these five different points like 
the guy goes into minute details and have uh, you know contingencies for every problem that you might encounter for uh, you know while you are uh, doing something so he has a lot in the book that i cannot possibly uh, cover in here so first of all there are a lot of examples of real people and how they use tiny habits right which is always um, very helpful um, he talks about the importance of celebrating uh, our tiny habits which is another very important thing that i found um, he talks about untangling bad behaviors because till now maybe we just maybe we touched about but maybe mostly we have just talked about um, you know how do i build new habits but untangling bad habits uses the same b equal to map uh, model but it's a different kind of a beat it takes it it's it's a slightly different approach of um, of untangling bad habits um the next is he talks about how behavior change itself is a skill right which we need which needs time to develop um, and lastly he talks about changing together with a group uh, like with a team or your family or your spouse and how do we approach behavior change as a group um so finally i would like to go back to the quote from the book that we initially started uh, which is the essence of tiny habits is take a behavior you want uh, make it tiny find where it fits naturally in your life and nurture growth um and i hope that i was able to give you an idea on how this works uh, using the examples from the book um so this is just another quote uh, which i'll just read uh, quickly um, new habits are like small seeds if you plant a good seed in the right spot it will grow without coaxing starting with behaviors you can and want to do makes it for a good seed choosing behaviors that set you up for success increases your confidence and mastery as you do bigger and better behaviors but it all starts with small and honest and specific so with that i would like to um, thank you all for your patience and bearing through the whole presentation uh, i hope i was able to provide some value now yeah, yeah it was it was brilliant uh thoroughly impressed the uh it actually even just this morning i was reading the wikipedia page on willpower and um right. uh something else uh that came up when i searched for willpower let me find it but yeah cuz okay. i've been rereading thinking grow rich which is a book i read when i was like 18 and it had a really big impact on me and i've kind of reread it maybe every 5 years of my life um right. and the first uh for those who don't know it's pretty much one of the foundational books for modern personal development practice it was written nearly about a, yeah about 100 years ago by Napoleon Hill who Andrew Carnegie commissioned to spend his entire life finding out what made the 5000 most successful people successful um compared to the rest and yeah the first half of the book is very much about the concept of willpower uh but it's very much like a using spiritual uh unrefined language about like really great language uh that kind of gets that motivation gets you thinking and relates kind of stories but nothing to like the analytical uh secular ability of of the right. modern day uh so yeah. what you went in this presentation actually really uh i i think i'm going to get that book and, and go through it cuz a lot of what it talked about is things i'm i'm even struggling with where uh you know trying to break i for a lot of extent like i've broken All right, I think we're live streaming is on. All right, I think I think we're back in in order. I'm just checking the uh the stream. Yeah, okay. Good. So we we just had some technical difficulties. Uh but yeah, the book seems uh seems great. Um and a lot of the things I've struggled with like yeah. I've gone through like many tremendous things but even just like everyday things um can get really challenging like w- one of the examples which I've kind of done was I used to suck at taking my vitamins um mm. I would and like uh, sometimes I just have them like on the kitchen bench to try and visually remind me or then sometimes I'd have them like on my desk to like visually remind me and I'd just see them and I still won't take them like I just try like everything and then eventually I was like okay I'm just going to take them after I have my morning smoothie 
And then like every yeah. now and then, maybe for like the first month or two, sometimes I would forget and then sometimes I wouldn't. But because of that kind of prompt, this is when I take it, uh, then it was like, okay, I kind of more incorporated that. And now it's kind of maybe 80% of the time now I take it <laughs> or like 90%. Um, yeah, so it's it's been way more effective. But then I wonder for like more bad habits like, like for running, when I'm running, it's great. I've got that sorted, like pushing in myself just a little bit more and not going too far. Or even if I do go too far, then going down and then having a recovery day. Um, but sometimes it's then like, okay, well, if I run, well, actually, yeah, if I run too much, then maybe I have to take a few days off and then that kind of messes up. But then I guess it's like, okay, well, that's part of the progress and I shouldn't hate myself for that. <laughs> uh, and... But all like, or for productivity, say, um, trying to get back into like a more typical sleep routine or work routine, things can pile up and then kind of go back to it. And yeah, I think then with Sumit talking about the traction chapter, it's going to tie in uh, quite quite nicely. I really impressed. I, I I thought it was well presented. Great slide deck. We can see your skills coming through as a graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really good. Sumit, are you there? Hey, Ben, yep. Sweet. All righty. You, you want to start or do you have any uh, feedback for Arjun? Uh, yep. Uh, so, hey, Arjun, that was great. Uh, uh, right. And, uh, um, yep. Uh, so, as far as uh, like tiny habits uh, is concerned, uh, uh, ben was asking me to elaborate on the uh, Kaizen point uh, that we have in our traction tips, right? And uh, uh, so that, the, that one was a, from a book I read uh, from the Japanese uh, uh, concept called Kaizen, which uh, basically just means uh, make small incremental changes rather than big changes. But... Uh, uh, this guy uh, get, gets into that, uh, into a more technical and uh, uh, more like research way of looking at it. Uh, while uh, that book was uh, more about uh, in a grandfatherly language, you know, uh, more like, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I think you're right, uh, Sumit. It's like something, it's like a wisdom that has always like, um, you know, uh, like we have talked about it. It's like, I think there is also phrases for that, right? Like you st in my language, there is a phrase, right? When you're eating something big, you start off with a bite or, you know, Lao Tzu's, uh, I think, you know, every... Um, uh, like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step uh, and all that so th this wisdom has already been there in our culture but somehow you know when we are actually implementing our day-to-day -day uh, things we you know we just forget about it and what this book helps us do is like remind us to do it so i found that brilliant and yeah thanks sumit uh thanks for that right. just one more point to add before we proceed with smith's presentation then is uh just even talking about the Beverly version five launch, <laughs> right? We could, the idea kind of came out first half of last year, like, well, second quarter last year. And it's now been 10 months uh, since the original announcement. And, uh, you know, the hope was for this really big launch, have all these to do is have the uh, internet as a mistake series already launched, have the 1984 and Brave New World discussions that we've recorded already launched have um, one of the projects already launched, have everything kind of already sorted. And then it's just like, well, then you just like keep yourself in the valley for longer. Like, and where, I, you know, even proceeding with this, not, you know, at least my presentation wasn't perfect. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it's getting out there. And then, you know, I was like, man, maybe I should delay because now everything's done. But then like, as I was just watching your presentation, I'm like, man, I'm so glad we went forward and do it today because that was great and then things are going to get better you know with the next time it'll get more refined and more refined and more refined um and it's just like yeah i guess you know riding that bicycle <laughs> you get more competent but initially it's wobbly so 
you know, part of that uh, process and kind of enjoying that. All right, uh, over to you, Sumit, then. All right. Okay, so... Right, uh, so am I um, sharing now? Yep. What is it? Uh, not a graphic uh, designer like uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Arjun. Uh, so I'm more of a PowerPoint guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so, it looks great. Uh, OK, so let's see. All right, uh, so this is about uh, the traction team uh, group in the Bavary. And uh, um, uh, basically what we do is uh, uh, we focus on our goals. Uh, we start with the year, month, week, and go all the way down to a day. And so we would, uh, uh, as you'll see, we'll, we would plan our year, uh, what our major goals then kind of map them to the uh, months and then uh, uh, every week we would make some progress and then every day we will keep each other accountable and uh, uh, we'll track each other's progress and uh, keep each other in check, kind of help each other grow. Then a uh, little bit of in introspection in our uh, weekly meetings and, uh, and then coaching, which uh, basically involves uh, uh, you coaching the other person and maybe the other coaching uh, other person coaching you uh, if you're stuck with something if you're having trouble let's say you're not able to wake up in the morning right and uh, so uh, if arjun is on the group he would tell you about tiny habits and how you can start small and all that so you benefit from each other's wisdom and then take and give feedback and see how that works out uh, so it's more like a personal development uh, kind of an experiment. Uh, uh, what we do with the, our uh, long-term goals is that uh, uh, we uh, start, uh, we do them at the beginning of the year, more like a resolution. Uh, and there is a there is a meeting for uh, for that uh, where we decide that. Uh, so this this is just one sample. Um, maybe you want to read fifty books, lose twenty kg. Uh, all of the <laughs> after uh, Arjun's presentation, it makes more sense. Uh, so, right, lose twenty kg, reduce uh, social media consumption, and finish a few projects. Right, and uh, then uh, we uh, okay. Uh, so we have got that uh, mapped out. Uh, but how do we implement it? Uh, so we have a. a a traction document uh, which focuses more on uh, a monthly and uh, weekly progress right so let me just go back for a second uh, okay so this would be a uh, this would be a separate document uh, which will contain our long term goals right uh, so uh, mostly i'm talking about an year here but you know uh, sometimes they would be longer right and then this is a separate document uh, which we focus more on like monthly weekly and um, for uh, for every week uh, we would have a new entry uh, so we have a one a weekly review meeting right and in which we review the previous week and then plan for the current week and then uh, do a little bit of coaching the format pretty much looks like this year week uh, x x uh, which means uh, which week it is out of the 56 weeks that we have in the year uh, and this is more like the format of uh, what uh, we document and i'll i'll give you an example in the next uh, next slide uh, wins and learnings from the last week uh, losses and challenges uh, then what is the focus for this week and then uh, some uh, long term to do's that we map into our focus and then uh, for the next week 
uh, what you want to so focus might have more than uh, like say five things but uh, uh, the most important things you would like to get you, you know check up done on and uh, this this is just one example of that uh okay so wins and learning so yes i went to gym regularly uh, i was reading 30 minutes every day and uh, in the losses i i would mention whatever went wrong right and uh, so i was planning on meditating but i uh, could not do it and uh, this is uh, the plan for the current week uh, that is to say the week in this example so i would like to focus on my work and health and my long term to do always is uh, you know to be more productive and these are the three activities that I kind of must do every day and uh, we'll review that in the next week's meeting. Uh, so right now we are at the week's level and uh, uh, then we go down to the daily goals. Uh, so what we usually do is uh, have a five to 10 minutes uh, meeting every morning uh, where we kind of lay out that day's goals and uh, at the end of the day we would post uh, we have a signal group for this so we would post on it uh, what went throughout the day for example pardon me i did yoga i did gym and uh, uh, some issues at work or whatever the update for that day was we would post on it and uh, if the other person doesn't post uh, so we can get in touch with them uh, and we'll we can try to see uh, if things are on track here, right? And uh, we also have a traction tips document where, uh, remember we have this weekly meeting, right? Uh, so uh, whatever the coaching part is and uh, whatever came out of that, uh, whatever worked, whatever didn't work. Uh, so we document that in the, uh, in this document and uh, Ben is moving that uh, to our uh, discourse as well. Let me briefly go to that. Okay, so uh, so this is our traction tips document, and uh, here we have all the tips that uh, we documented uh, uh, throughout the year. This is the kaizen that uh, the one that I was talking about. Uh, ben, uh, do you, do you want me to go through a few of them? Yeah, sure. Uh, and these are the ones still in the document. We've moved a lot of them already to the forum. Right. Yep. Uh, so, so in this, uh, from the forum one, uh, uh, I think hurdles is the, is the one that I really liked. Uh, so let, I'll, I'll go through that first. All right. So while that opens, let me, um, let me go through this one. Uh, achieve uh, goals in small increments rather than one big changes. And uh, then, um, and then it links to the book and uh, the Wikipedia. And this one was from me. Uh, this was more about, uh, but then again, I I'm looking at everything now through uh, the presentation of Arjun, right? So. Uh, like uh, all right, so maybe not everything makes sense now. Uh, so for uh, this was more about uh, uh, for the activities you must do. Sometimes you do it uh, with the feeling of loathing it. So this is um, probably because maybe I was my goal was to work out for an hour, right? And uh, I'm like, oh no, uh, I have to work out for an hour, for an hour again. Uh, so it it puts me in that negative state of mind, uh, which Arjun explained. Uh, so this one was more about reframe the activity in a positive way uh, so that you can kind of get motivated to do it. Uh, so list down all the reasons uh, why you want to do it. It will make it will make me healthy. I'll be more attractive to women. Uh, I'll have I will avoid the healthcare issues later on. And so, so that puts you in a positive state of mind. And then maybe you can tackle that. Okay, I, th I think it opened. Uh, this one was from Ben. Yeah, this one is more about uh, 
let's say uh, you use Facebook a lot and it's really impacting your work. Uh, so what you basically do is you maybe uninstall, uh, uh, let's say disable Facebook from your app or uh, on, on from your phone or put a password on it, right? Uh, so every time you open it, uh, so you have to swipe and uh, that kind of adds one more layer of, uh, uh, you know, hurdle in your way before you can access the app. And uh, I, I think Ben and me also have a DNS filter, uh, which uh, you can use to filter out any website. So when you try to go to the website, it will not open. So, and uh, that kind of, many of the times you are like, you know what, I'll just go back to work. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go to the website. Uh, so yeah, this this was great. I uh, uh, it kind of works, uh, but then uh, I end up uh, reinstalling the app and then enabling it and then keeping it like that. Uh, so, but uh, uh, yes, I have used it many times, um, especially with the YouTube. Uh, so what I do is I go into the Android settings and disable it. Uh, then I cannot find that app. And uh, it is such a pain to then look for it again, go there, enable it. So many of the times I'm like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll do something else. Uh, so there are uh, uh, there are many uh, of uh, these uh, that will be documenting here and taking your feedback on. Uh, so any questions? Uh, yeah, that, that's great. Like uh, we've been doing, uh, when did we start with the meetings? Let me just check. Because it's been like uh, been a while. Uh, yes, it's... I did not. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let me check. I, I got uh, We I have got, been officially. Yeah. Yeah, 2020, we have been week 40. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Yes, uh, but uh, we have been unofficially doing it since, uh, I believe, 2018, maybe. Okay, yeah. By, well, yeah, because by... we had different forms of it uh, prior yes. to this modern one, yeah. So the, the current form that Sumit's done in his presentation, the weekly meetings and the daily updates has been going since 2020, week 41, so a year and a half, nearly a year and a half now. So that's pretty good, like, for consistency. Uh, and it's certainly been valuable to kind of, you know, you can always look back and then find out what you did in a week. Um, and now, since then, we've kind of more recently developed like a calendar system, like a calendar to do system that's kind of been really helpful. So it's been kind of cool to keep track of, you know, go back in time and then see what we did and what our challenges were and then you know, review that and find out recurrent issues or themes and also have a friend um, who can call us up when we're screwing up or see maybe a recursive things or when we've fallen into a pattern. Um, that's been really useful. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, maybe that can uh, uh, actually, so what happened was uh, uh, I am more or less uh, I kind of just started using the calendar system, so it's more like an experiment for me. So it's uh, 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 the rules on that are not clear to me, uh, and what is the best configuration? So maybe that can be uh, part of our future presentations. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, apart from that, uh, I I was trying to avoid uh, the personal uh, stuff in the presentation, but. Uh, uh, like over time, uh, you might uh, develop a certain kind of uh, relationship with your uh, traction teammate, and uh, you know sometimes you are having uh, personal problems, personal issues because you know we are, we are not robots. And uh, uh, over the years, we have really uh, you know Ben and me have spoken to each other about various uh, issues like that, and uh, we have been able to uh, get. Uh, out of certain situations and uh, make progress or at the very least uh, uh, just have someone who would uh, hear you uh, right and uh, I have seen Ben uh, grow uh, in the last one and a half year really tremendously uh, uh, so there, there was <laughs> 
there was a long static <laughs> period <laughs> where we were just struggling and then eventually a band just took off i am more like uh, still on the more uh, i refuse to learn <laughs> kind of situation uh, <laughs> uh, ho hopefully this year will be better for me uh, yeah that's all yeah so the way the uh, the traction group will work is um We've got a traction group right now. We've got invited, uh, yeah, myself, Sumit. We've been doing it for the year and a half with this format uh, that we think kind of works and we want to scale that out and then incorporate suggestions from other people. So uh, we're looking for new members to kind of onboard. And then what will happen is there'll be uh, people will have those pairings uh, in the group, so one-on-one -on -one pairings. Uh, but then each kind of one-on-one -on -one pairing uh, all of the group will then have like a global thing where they can kind of share the tips and advice uh, from each other. So uh, Jordan's recently, uh, you know, interested in joining and as well as Halma, um, another Beverly member. So then maybe they will be able to connect uh, for the one-on-one -on -one and then all together we can kind of share tips and advice um, uh, as, you know, more and, you know, anonymously uh in the group like the group chat but then in a subgroup chat where it's just the one-on-ones then we can go in uh real big detail with people we develop like a, a immense trust with and kind of know the routines but then yeah at the monthly meetups can discuss kind of what worked for our one-on-ones and what together as a group and iterate on the learnings together so the generic stuff we can post to the forum in the traction category so it's kind of already demoed that um and yeah so if that also sounds cool if you you know looking out for someone to um you know keep you accountable and, and help you gain traction um then yeah then, then that's the the group for that and and reach out uh the links you'll be able to find all the resources on the on the forum for that cool arjun any uh feedback on Smith's presentation Uh, so uh, I think, uh, you know, Sumit, you went uh, like what you explained, you explained very well about the whole uh, traction. And I think it's a great idea with the, especially with the uh, sort of this learnings and what have we learned uh, over the past and then putting that because it's sort of like this uh, wiki page, right? Like which we can edit, but also, um, you know, we can like, maybe find out what kind of issues, recurring issues we are having and what the other member is also facing. Maybe we, we are facing similar uh, situations because, you know, mostly it's similar, the issues that happen when we are doing something. And yeah, I think the whole idea is um, awesome. Uh, also, the what Sumit shared in the presentation about um, like doing that whole yearly goal and then breaking it down into uh, like, uh, weekly and daily goal and all that i think yeah that is a great approach sort of reverse engineering where you want to get to and uh, right uh, you know build daily actions to that yeah yeah and for the yearly review one of the new things we did this year was uh if we have our yearly resolution or goals uh like say for one of the goal I, one of mine was walk 50 kilometers and run 30 kilometers um so that's in one sitting uh, then I would say, then I broke that down by like, okay, well, what progress do I need to make incrementally to get that? And then what then, if I'm falling behind, would then I need to sacrifice to kind of get, make sure I continue reaching that? Um, and then another one was get back to four minute kilometers. <laughs> um, so uh, then I can kind of, well, for that one, then I just need to get 10 seconds faster every week. Um, and so then I can, uh, and then that would probably mean like going for a run like four times a week um, to be able to get back to that. So to set the yearly goal and then really spend some time with your buddy to kind of think, well, what is the uh, kind of the breakdown, the incremental breakdown to make that more accomplishable. And then when we're in our weekly meetings for the foundations, we can make sure that each week we're not just trying to accomplish goals, but we're also doing that balancing act. Um, and then your presentation today kind of gives a lot of inspiration for that. So <laughs> it'll be very cool as that uh, the traction group grows to see what happens. 
All right. Um, so we have one more presentation left for today. This one is pre-recorded. Uh, this is for Concept Hut, one of the other Beverly members. Uh, he recently launched his own uh, channel trailer. So he's got his own YouTube channel up and going. So we're going to just play his channel trailer. Uh, he's tackling very similar things than what we've tackled on Beverly previously. So I'm very happy to to share this video. It's a little five minute video. He's kind of nailed his little channel trailer. It's so good. Um, so I'll play that and then we can maybe have a little discussion about it. Uh, he's in America, so he's not able to join at this time zone <laughs> that we're holding this meeting right now. All right, share video. Howdy, welcome to the Concept Hut. I'll be your host, Concept Hut. My main goal with this channel is to help people flourish in life. I will help people do this by sharing concepts that apply to life in clarified ways. Most people's understandings of things are implicit, which means the understandings are implied through examples and context. For example, most people have a difficult time clearly defining the words they use every day. Go ahead and try it with words you use all the time, such as good or bad. Implicit information is fuzzy and unclear and is more felt than understood. What is most useful to a person is explicit information, which is information that is clearly stated. With my content, I'll be making the implicit explicit and getting to the core of things in clear language. The explanations and explorations will be as thorough as much as time allows. This will help you have foundational concepts and a clear picture of various situations and solutions. Sad look, we're going on an exploration through life. I'll be covering a variety of life topics. For example, these five things. What life is made up of and how to orient yourself in it. The meaning of life. All about friendship, such as how to find and make friends as an adult. Choosing a career and morality in an objective sense. Additionally, for some concepts that have many fuzzy definitions, I'll be sharing clear and core definitions for those. By core definitions, I mean that it would apply to all uses of that term. Some of the concepts covered will be including, but not limited to, good, bad, value, meaning, love, and friendship. The goal is to cover many topics that are of great meaning and value to you long term. Most of the topics are not bound to any particular time or place. Why I'm making this channel is because life is a complicated and difficult thing to live well. We all have struggles to deal with. We all have our demons to fight. Nobody is perfect. We are all flawed. We all have parts of who we are that if we were able to resolve them, could change the course of our lives in deeply meaningful ways forever. Many of these changes would also greatly benefit our interactions and relationships with other people. We all have experienced the pain caused by the chaos of life. I've dealt with it, my family has, my friends have. We can see that pain openly displayed by people who talk about their life problems in confusions in forum posts, in YouTube videos, and in real-time voice chats. We see the pain from being lost or misguided in life when we see people on the news who have lashed out in harmful ways. We are all trying to find our way through life. It is deeply saddening to know that people are having problems that so often can be solved if just by knowing certain pieces of information. I've worked very hard to find solutions for my own life and to help the people I care about. I want to share that information with others so that it can help reduce their suffering in life and instead bring happiness and joy. The videos will have a lot of philosophical, psychological, and scientific concepts and information. The videos will also have other forms of life advice that can be put into practice. When I share the solutions I've come to, I won't only share with you what you can do to make things better, I will also share how to do those things. When I share what things you can do, I will also say why. 
when I share with you how to do those things. I will also say why. It is valuable to not just have the what, but also the how and the why. Some topics require a series, so I'll be doing that. When we reach enough subscribers, you can expect to see some podcasts with friends and guests. I may do some reaction videos as well. Let me know if you have any videos you think I should respond to. Now I have a question for you. What topics would you like to see me cover? Tell me in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and click that bell icon so that you never miss a Concept Hut video. Take care, and see you in the next one. Isn't that great? How do I how do I stop this now? <laughs> uh, okay, stop video. There we go. Yeah, so that's uh, Concept Hut's uh, channel trailer. Uh, is that cool? Yep, I think that's <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it's something that we all uh, are interested in, meaning in life. And you know, one of the things that he talked about about you know how to make French friends as an adult is something you know really hard. And yeah, I would like to know more about that. All right. Yeah, it, uh, so I've I've been having lots of chats with him, and we're going to be uh, yeah. He's got a whole whole series, as you already mentioned in the um, in the video. So we've we've had a lot to kind of talk about, but yeah, and I've probably had maybe like t maybe how much five hours of calls with him since the channel video launched, and kind of been going further and further into kind of the definitions and. I was hoping to have my presentations done, <laughs> uh, but they weren't. Um, but because they kind of build off his one, but maybe for uh, next month we'll have him uh, have him done. I, I I can riff off one thing. Let me just pull it up. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. So the implicit versus explicit part he talked about um, is. Really interesting. I've put it as you want depth, but not just breadth of vocabulary. So a lot of words, uh, like if you think visually about it, um, uh, with your some words, like say God has like a huge amount of depth to that word. Um, and depending on how people wrestle with the depth of that word can be very different in terms of what it's actually meaning. So people will have different implicit conceptions uh, or subjective conceptions behind what, say, God means. An atheist as well as a theist will have very different as well as that new atheist theism of like the Peterson fan base uh, have. <laughs> so where they can believe in gods but not uh, deities. So it's kind of interesting then with... Uh, the depth of words and at, at the time when I watched it um, I did a lot of journal notes kind of around that um, where as we learn about the etymology of words they really do bring home a lot of uh, new relationship or power to the word and our, our ability to actually relate to the world um, so for instance um, we've always heard about um well, a lot of people when they say the word realize like oh i realize this um they're actually just intending to say recognize um, but there's actually kind of three steps there between the progression between recognize and realize is a middle step uh which is reveal uh so it goes first you kind of recognize a pattern then it's nature or its form or it's pattern really or the form of that pattern reveals itself to you and then from that you can then realize it because you've internalized what that form is so let me share a little window here of kind of we fleshed this out on a call myself and concept about flesh this out some more um, in terms of well what is the full process of getting to you getting to depth of a of a pattern or of a word of realizing something because Actually, before I share that, because one of the things is like 
there's this misconception that humans were evicted from Eden, like when the birth of consciousness occurred, that we already came equipped with our full vocabulary, that we already knew the word God and we already knew the word a father and we already knew the word love and we already knew the word anxiety um, but these words we invent we have to invent these before we just start off with grunts <laughs> and we have to actually live through and internalize these forms of the world um, of our internal and external world and invent words for these uh, so one of the things when i was reading through all of this um, was the Stone Age has been around for more than 3 million years and there was, there was many homo species and some species that weren't homo um, that were participating in the Stone Age, actually figuring out not just how to pick up rocks and then whack people with them, but actually how to figure out which type of rocks we can whack to can create certain tools, which is flint napping, certain tools like flint or obsidian are great tools for creating um, uh, tools from there. And the YouTube videos for flint napping or even the Wikipedia article is amazing. So for instance, like two and a half million years ago, there was Homo erectus in China with uh, Stone Age tools. And that's crazy because Homo sapiens only came in uh, 200,000 years ago. And what made us, what made Homo sapiens be able to colonize and interbreed and conquer the world was that we had language where the other ones did and we had a larger incubation period for our young uh, and that allowed the facilities to develop language. Um, and then 200,000 years ago to about 10,000 years ago is when we entered the Neolithic period where we birthed civilization. Um, and that's at least when recorded history kind of starts. It could have been, you know, better things we haven't yet discovered. Like some of these discoveries are only really happening in the last 20 years, even in the last five years in archaeology. So Homo sapiens invent, create language. And then 10,000 years ago, you have these uh, civilizations start forming, um, which is amazing. And they're forming independently in like the Levant or the Middle East and China. And, uh, I think one in Europe and somewhere else. So it's, it's really, really uh, fascinating. But it, even if you go 3000 BC to ancient Egypt, this is a culture that had an incredibly sophisticated religion, very incredibly sophisticated notions of civility. Um, you can read some of their text. I'll probably link them, I guess, in the description, where it is full-on instructions on how to live a great civil life and be kind to your fellow man and things um, and that were written that long ago. So really, really cool. But one of the things at least, uh, but you get, you, the point there is the progression, which is we have to invent these words. Um, and how then do we invent these words? How do we turn like a, something that occurs to us into a, a proper conception or internalization? So first there's a cue, something occurs in the world, um, something prompts to us, like uh, let's say a volcano erupts or for instance, or a animal attacks us or a fruit falls on our head, right? All these different cues. So something occurs to us. And then from there, we have the opportunity to recognize, hey, we've recognized this cue. Some cues will go completely unnoticed. There'll be omens we never saw but some cues we will recognize. And then from there, we can actually track the, 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 the cue or something. So let's say a cue could be footprints. And then we recognize those footprints. We were alert enough to recognize them. And now we're tracking them. We're tracking along the trail of these footprints. And to be able to successfully track the animal, or what it represents, we don't actually know yet. We're just seeing the footprints and we're follow following it. We need to kind of internalize this animal which is then try and think what would be its moves or its anticipation, how would it behave? And once we're starting to internalize these external patterns that just presented themselves to us, then we can start to kind of diffuse the patterns or what this representation, what this cue um, kind of represented. So diffusing is like, say, when we shoot light down a prism and then white light turns into all of the colors of the rainbow in diffuse. So we're able to 
get something that is con conglomerated together and chaotic and then separated it out into specific and explicit uh, forms. So once we've internalized it, then we can start to kind of diffuse the aspects of its nature. When is it hungry? When does it sleep? And then from there, we can start tracing a conception of the animal or of the concept that we're following. So this isn't just for animals, it's for any type of idea that we're wishing to internalize. So once we've tracked it, internalized it, diffused it, then we can start tracing kind of its, uh, its outline in our mind. Then we can kind of start sketching maybe some different ideas of what it is and then hone them in. Now, hone is actually interesting because it means to like sharpen, but hone is actually a stone tool to hone, like to sharpen tools. And it's like a stone age tool, or it's also a stone age tool to make a hole larger in certain dimensions. So hone is kind of when we're offering then precision or sharpening our sketch. And then from there, we're actually defining, we're offering definition. We're turning that sketch into, we're kind of tweaking that iPhone or that image filter, right? And offering it more definition to offer more contrast. So then we acumate. Acumate is uh, another interesting word, which is relates to acumen. Um, so tapering to a point. Now it's points are kind of getting more, more there. We're kind of realizing more traits about it delineate so now it's actually defined beyond its surroundings um it's standing out and then once like we've got a nice silhouette kind of thing um not just a silhouette but now yeah kind of a silhouette it's, its outline is really clear and then it kind of reveals itself to us and this is similar to like that parable about jesus facing the demon of many names um legion and once he knows the name of the demon right then he knows also the pattern of it. So this is one of the reasons why horror movies are great um, because they can tell us about the demons that manifest themselves in the world so we can prepare against them. Also why people watch dash cam videos. Uh, we want to kind of see, you know, see the, uh, recognize what's, or I say a dash cam video online. It's like a queue and then we go through this process and we're trying to find out what was the pattern or what kind of occurred. So it reveals. But then once we've kind of got this revealed to us, then we kind of need to personify it, um, which is then to intimate. So intimate uh, is pronounced differently is a different word, which is intimate. Um, intim and intimate is kind of the process of forming an intimate connection with something. So it's to offer it like an effective or tangible quality inside us. And then from there, we can add to it a limb. So limb is like a, a singular image. So if we're painting one image of God, it doesn't capture all of God. It only captures one specific image. And we do that enough times, and now we kind of have a portrayal of God. We have a portrayal of the animal or a portrayal of an idea. Um, so then once we have a betrayal, we can now relate to it. We can start to kind of understand its nature. We have many different pictures. We can kind of formulate them uh, together. And then from that, we can then identify uh, uh, its identity, kind of figure out, hey, what does it stand for? What's its principles? In ancient Egyptian mythology, what is its car, its spirit? And then from there, um, and also what is its spa, its material form? Uh, so how do these things kind of work together? And then we can clarify, uh, which is to make clear um, what it is uh, and make it more pure, pristine in terms of it, less uh, conju conjugated with other ideas and less corrupted or blurred with other ideas. We can really clarify what it means. So reticulate is to divide or mark something in such a way as to resemble a net or network arrange or mark like a net or network. So how does it then relate to other things? Um, and then from there, we can start to realize its nature um, and realize its nature individually. And then from there, we can weave uh, and weave a web and then complect. So complect, um, or weave a web is actually interesting. So the World Wide Web um, is then weaving intermingled ideas together to form something kind of greater than its whole. 
Um, but this forming of something greater than its whole is complexing. So complexing is when you're adding something to it that goes a little bit further than the original material in a different direction. Um, so then that's when we could invent new gods or new animals or um, add more sophisticated understandings in a little tangential direction. Um, so that was just uh, kind of this whole thing about implicit versus explicit because when people talk about love, um, it's very, that's one of the words which people, is very implicit around it. There's many different forms of love um, and there's many different purposes of it. Um, what is love being used for and how is it being portrayed? So in Horima, they have several gods who kind of represent the different facets of love um, and the different natures of love. And then that's kind of gone forward later to like things like agape and whatnot. Um, but love is interesting. Just an example for love would be uh, in a marriage, uh, love is more a practice that you do. You commit to loving your partner. It's not really an emotion because that emotion will fade and go away as lust kind of settles down. Um, and as you know, you grow in, as people, but there is a commitment to love the person uh, beyond the time of the emotion and to reinvigorate um, that, that commitment and that feeling. Um, so even reinvigorate is to offer vigor. Um, to something. So re-offer vigor. Um, so that's, yeah, that, that's my little bit there about kind of the building upon uh, Concepts Hut's little reference there about implicit versus explicit. I have some sketches and stuff, but I'll present them next meetup <laughs> um, and it'll, it'll be really cool. All right, any feedback? Um, so yeah, I was just thinking, uh, like, well, like the whole, uh, like how far is like recognized from realize, right? Like when people say you, that's what you said in the beginning, when people say that they realize something they're actually recognizing and how, like you did not mention how far recognize was from realize. And it takes these many steps for it to, you know, actually realize. So that was an interesting, um, yeah, an interesting thing for me right and the big one is just reveal like uh in spiritual uh sex they use the term revelation and what is revelation it's to say its form revealed itself to me i understand its pattern right and then once you've kind of understand its pattern you can actually really internalize it and like empathy is also about being able to internalize a personification of another person such that you can kind of consider what they are going through. You're not actually conjuring externally this person, right, in front of you and then poking and prodding them um, as the AI big tech companies do, <laughs> where they conjure up a, uh, an avatar of you to then poke and prod um, and see what is most effective to modifying your behavior. <laughs> but uh, for us, we internalize um, a portrayal of someone, a personification of them uh, and then through that we can start to realize change in our relationship to that person so yeah even for a salesperson like they're internalizing who they are they wish to um, communicate with um, so then they can modify behavior or modify their person persona relationship to that person yeah um all right, so uh, any other feedback? Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll do the, the do the outros. All righty, I'm going to take that with do the outros. So yeah, so next up, uh, we have a lot of things to look forward to. We have the Beverly Dorothy launch that software project uh, coming up for next month. We have the groups that will be sorted out some more, uh, and. Hopefully, I have the person persona divide presentation done as also my corporate Unitarianism uh, presentation done. Um, and part of, again, this big great thing about Beverly version 5 is it's about kind of strong personalities coming together to kind of offer the best and grow beyond themselves uh, in this group. 
are in the groups that are applicable to them, but all under this, you know, universal culture of a willingness to grow beyond yourself. Uh, so with that, you know, hopefully over time we'll have way more groups. Um, I can imagine in a few years as some of our people get interested in properly reading Marx, we'll probably set up a Beverly Marxism group. <laughs> and then other people who are just starting off with libertarianism, libertarianism they can set up a Beverly libertarianism group. And we can have them battle themselves up in the meetup um, and flesh out their arguments. And that would be great rather than just having these unrefined, unsophisticated, you know, uh, 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 low resolution arguments just bickering all the time is that they can really go away, strengthen their arguments and then come back with something really great. Um, Because the more that even on this channel, I've criticized uh marxism a lot but then the more i read about it the more i can really understand it <laughs> uh, and actually really emphasize with it i don't but that's part of maybe one of the other things uh to kind of intro the person persona divide uh presentation for next time is one of the learnings i had a while ago was that we are more than we are it's we are more than we are that we can know. Um, so even for me, I have a relationship. The person Ben has a personification of who Ben is. And that personification of who Ben is will never match who the person of Ben is. So myself is beyond comprehension. But over time, I start to kind of discover who this person is. And I improve my own person persona relationship. Um, to myself as I do with other people when I meet someone um, they are a person but I will never completely know that person but over time I will be able to hone in my personification of them to get closer and closer and closer to who that person is um, and get a more accurate representation and that offers a tremendous amount of uh, freedom uh, when you interact with people or even interact with yourself or interact with conflicting ideas. But when it comes to politics or identity, what it announces is that any type of identity, like to call you someone, let's say call myself a libertarian, wouldn't be accurate because then it actually restricts who I am just to being a libertarianism. And whereas I'm greater than that, and at least I should be, otherwise... It would be tremendously sad if I was as shallow to be categorized by one ideology. Um, so part of the goal with that grow beyond yourself is to not fall victim to just being as shallow as an ideology, um, to be able to grow beyond them and see how those ideologies interact. And that's kind of documented in the uh, Beverly Manifesto, the transition from isolated wisdom to competitive wisdom to um collaborative wisdom um so all so with that let me share my screen again and we'll do the uh do the wrap up all right where's there we go all right application window live yep live streaming all right share all righty um Yep, so that's the Berry Dorothy project that will launch next. Another shout-out to our sponsors, uh, Elliot Dittman, Armin, I'll just go with Armin, uh, Bolsa, and Rob Morris. You can find them in the video description for our Berry Manifesto at beverly.me. You'll be able to find that. It'll redirect you. You can learn about Beverly's mission and its purpose and what do we mean when we say isolated wisdom, competitive wisdom, collaborative wisdom. And then from there, at the bottom, you can have all the instructions on how to get started with this new Beverly version 5. So go and uh, uh, join, look at one of our many groups um, that we have and go uh, see which ones are of interest to you. Otherwise, just, you know, search the forum, find, search for something that's of, you know, interest of you, whatever it is. So... <laughs> The one I always go to, <laughs> no, I'm not going to search that one. Um, let's say hunger, right? Uh, then there's plenty of resources all about hunger. Um, and that's part of our study notes and discussions. Or you can just post something in the discussions. That's great. The chapters we still need people for, very beginners. 
um, which will be going through how to read a book and then 1984, Brave New World, Ordinary Men and Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, Beverly Scholars, which will be going through the how to read a book reading list, as well as the Beverly Traction Group. We had two kind of brilliant presentations kind of about that today. Uh, and also for the Beverly Women's and Beverly uh, India groups, we're also looking for people for that and Christianity. Well, pretty much all the groups, more the, more the merrier, but especially the ones that are kind of denoted as um, pending or need more interested members. So with that, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. And I'm so glad Beverly Version 5 is now out there and people can start joining and uh, continue on with their groups uh, without always having to wait for me all the time. <laughs> so uh, I'm, uh, it's going to be great to see how Beverly grows more than just what, what Ben is um, now that I'm no longer a roadblock. So it's, uh, it's really cool. And, and even the presentations today was a great example of that. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Arjun. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, cheers. Bye-bye.